Hi there, in this video I'm going to show you how to use Model Builder with an ArcGIS Pro to automate complex workflows and even create tools that other people can use to replicate your work. So if you're regularly doing complex strings of tasks where you're running one tool, taking the output, feeding it into another, it can get quite time consuming. A Model Builder is basically a way that allows us to string together those tools and automate tasks without the need for using complex coding languages like Python. And while it might not have quite the flexibility of a coding language, it certainly allows us to automate 90% of the things we're likely to want to do on a day-to-day -day basis. So in this example, um, I'm going to use a raster elevation model and a vector layer containing topographic data in order to automate a simple workflow for identifying areas that might be suitable for solar panels. Um, so this is just a, a short example, but it gives you all of the basics you need to connect together much longer and more complex workflows. So the first thing we need to do is create a blank model that we can work in. So to do this, we go to view, open up the catalog pane. And if you go to toolboxes, you'll notice by default ArcGIS Pro creates um, an empty toolbox for each new project. So we're going to use the empty toolbox. So mine's called Model Builder because that's what my project is called. Uh, I'm just going to right click and go New Model to create a blank model that I can use. And starting is as simple as taking my first data set, dragging it, and dropping it into the model. So I've dragged in my topographic area layer here. Now, the first thing that I want to do is actually take this layer, which contains all kinds of land uses, and extract just the buildings, because I want to find areas of rooftops um, that would be suitable for solar panels. So in order to add a tool into my model, um, I find it exactly the same way I normally would, by going to Analysis Tools, and I tend to use the, the search function rather than browsing through the toolboxes. And I'm going to use the select tool. And then I literally click and drag and drop the tool onto my model. And you can see it shows up here. It's currently grayed out, which shows that it doesn't have all of the inputs that it needs to be able to run. And then to connect in my layer, I just drag again and you'll see an arrow up here and drop that on the tool. And it gives me a number of options. Um, here I want to use this as the input features. And you can see that now that it's connected, um, the tool has gone yellow because it has all of the inputs it requires. But actually, I need to give it a bit more information than that because I need to tell it what to select. So if I want to view the details for this or any other tool, I just double click on the rectangle representing the tool and it opens up all of the options and parameters. So in this case, it's already got my input feature. Um, it's got an output feature class, which I'm gonna leave as set to the default because for me this is just a, a working step and the thing that I do need to do is actually create the selection clause. So I'm going to select features where the descriptive group is equal to building because I'm just interested in buildings. Click OK and I've now automated a step um, where it will select buildings. Now obviously one tool on its own isn't really a workflow uh, but the next thing I'm going to do is actually use my elevation model to identify south-facing areas within the rooftops. So I'm going to drag the aspect tool into my model. I'm going to drag my elevation data set into the model. Oh, I've accidentally dragged both in. And I'm going to set, again by clicking and dragging, the digital surface model as the input raster for the aspect tool. But I only want to look at the aspect within the rooftops. So I now have a layer that contains building outlines. So I can set that as an input to the aspect tool and actually set it as a mask. So it's not just the inputs that we can set this way, it's actually the environment variables as well. So I'm gonna set the buildings as a mask. So it's only calculating aspect within the building outlines. And then because I'm interested in solar panels, I'm in the Northern Hemisphere, so the optimal areas are going to be south-facing. I then want to be able to pull out the south-facing areas 
um, from the resultant aspect calculation. And I'm going to do that by reclassifying the raster layer that's produced. So I'm going to drop in the reclassify tool, connect my output aspect layer, and use that as the input raster. And then again, I need to double click to go into the reclassify tool and set the parameters. So in this case, I need to tell it what values it's going to reclassify to what output values. Um, so in this case, I'm going to go from minus one to 150. So minus one being flat. Um, and I'm actually not interested in these areas. So I'm going to set them to no data. Anything between 150 and 210 degrees aspect, um, I am interested in because they're the south facing areas. So I'm going to set those as um, one. And then anything between 210 degrees back round to north, 360. Again, I'm going to set to no data. And then finally, anything that already is set to no data, which will be anything outside of the buildings, um, I want to keep as no data. And I'm also going to change the name of the output raster um, and call this final areas. So there we go. I've now set up a selection query, which pulls out building outlines. Um, I've created an aspect layer just within the buildings and then reclassified that aspect layer to give me just the south facing areas. Now, if I was to run this tool now, by default, it would save all of these layers in the background um, in my default database because I've not changed the location, but it wouldn't add them into my contents panel. It wouldn't add them to my map. If I want a layer to be added to the map, I just need to right click and choose add to display. And if I right click again, you'll see add to display is now got a little tick next to it. Um, and that means that when I run this tool, the final areas layer will be added um, into my map automatically. So now I've created this very simple model. I'm going to save it and run it. Now this is only a small model, so it should run quite quickly. Here we go. And you can see now that the final areas layer has been added to my map. And if I go back to the map view, you can see these purpley areas um, are now the rooftop areas which are south facing, so potentially suitable for solar panels. Now, obviously, I could do much more to extend this model. I could convert these to a vector using the, the raster to polygon tools. I could then calculate areas. I could split them up to get the area that falls within individual building polygons, all kinds of, of additional steps. But, you know, this is enough to demonstrate the principles of Model Builder. Now, the final thing that's useful to do is to turn this into a tool so that somebody else um, can easily run it, or indeed, if you want to run it again for another location. And if I was to just double click on this model to open it like a tool at the moment, you'll see there's no options available here because I've basically hard coded um, the various input and output files within the model. So if we want to change that and turn this into a a more flexible tool, all we need to do is specify some parameters. So parameters are options that you can change each time you run the model. And in this case, the things that would make sense as parameters are my input topographic area file. So I can just choose that to be a parameter. You'll see this little P appear so that I know that's that's happened. Um, the digital surface model I can set to a parameter and also the output file. So if I want to change the output name or file location, I can easily do that um, as well. And if I save this now, I can go back uh, to the model within the catalog again. And if I click it to open it, you'll see it now opens up and looks like any other tool that you might be used to within ArcGIS Pro with a number of, kind of options for me to, to change. Now, in this case, um, I've not got a separate topographic area to hand, but what I will do is just change the name of this output, call it final areas two, just to demonstrate what happens if I run the tool again, 
and it now runs just as any other tool would. And in just a moment, we'll see final areas two appear in my drawing order here. And obviously it's identical to the original layer because I've, I've run the same model, but I could now, you know, change the topographic area file, the building outlines, I could change the digital surface model and rerun this analysis for any other location without having to worry about all of the, the intermediary steps. So there you go. Um, that's a very quick and easy introduction to how you can use Model Builder to automate your workflows. Now, there are a lot more things that Model Builder can do, um, and one of the particularly powerful functions is probably the iterators, um, as well as logical options, so it can respond to um, you know, data sets being absent, for example, if you end up with an empty layer being produced in one of the steps, it can respond to that in different ways. The iterators allow it to loop through a number of files or a number of folders um, so that if you've already got you know, 20 data sets that you know need processing, then you can create a model that does that automatically without the need for, for extra inputs. And those are things that I'll cover in future videos. But if you found that helpful, please remember to like and subscribe to the channel um, and keep your eyes peeled for future videos. Thanks a lot.